Amazon FBA, drop shipping, affiliate marketing, digital marketing agency, coaching. There's so many options and everyone's got a theory on what the best online business to start is right now. But here's the thing, they're all wrong. Now, I appreciate that's a pretty bold claim to make. I mean, who the hell am I to tell you what the best online business to start is? But I do have an answer, and it might not be an answer you like, but it's an answer I feel very confident giving. But before I explain what that is, I just wanna give you a very brief bit of backstory on how I've got to that answer so you know I'm not just plucking it out of thin air. Because for me, I've always been really interested in this idea of starting and building an online business. I think I very quickly realized that an online business would be the quickest way to make a lot of money in a relatively short amount of time and to do so without needing a lot of capital up front, without needing to invest in premises, you know, something I could literally start from my bedroom, run anywhere in the world. That was always the idea. And as much as I like the idea of the models and private jets and yachts and all of that, Dan Bilzerian lifestyle stuff, for me, it really came from a place of, uh, I'm from quite a poor background, and so I wanted that financial security. Bit of a cliche, financial freedom. People use that term all the time, but it is true that I think a lot of us just want that feeling of knowing that we don't have to worry about money anymore, knowing that you know we can live life on our terms. That's, I think, the goal, isn't it, for a lot of us? And so for, for that reason, for quite a few years throughout my teenage years, I was experimenting with all different kinds of things. Even from about the age of 11, I started my first, I say online business. It was really just kind of a website. It was a cashback website. But from there, I tried all sorts of stuff. I tried internet forums. I tried uh, making websites for other people. There were loads of different things. And I've come to a bit of a realization after trying all of this different stuff. I truly believe that the reason the vast majority of people aren't successful with their online business has nothing to do with the type of business they're running and everything to do with the fact that they have shiny object syndrome, which is probably something you've heard of before. This idea that we're working on one thing and then there's this shiny object over here, this new idea, this different business idea, and we switch to that and ditch what we're doing right here before it ever really gets the momentum up and takes off. And then we try this new shiny idea. But then once we've been doing it for a little while, it stops being so shiny. And so when someone else comes along and says, I've got this great new business idea, the best thing that you can ever run online, and we switch to that. I think so many of us fall into that trap. I probably did a little bit throughout my teenage years there where I was experimenting with different ideas. I would very quickly move on to the next thing. Whereas if I'd actually seen some of those ideas through, I'd have probably been able to scale them to quite a good level. You know, the ideas themselves weren't flawed. It was just that I was so quick to move on to something else. And I think I see that a lot, to be honest. I see people complaining. Oh, I did Amazon, didn't work. Did drop shipping, nope, no go. Oh yeah, I tried an agency, but we didn't get any clients. Well, how long were you doing them? Oh, you know, uh, two months. I mean, how can you expect to get significant results in a niche that's quite competitive in just a couple of months? I think that really is the heart of the problem, that we're not giving ourselves long enough to really pursue these ideas and we're getting caught up with shiny object syndrome of always looking for that next new idea, that next thing, because oh, that next one is gonna be way easier or it looks way more enticing, but it very rarely is. So my personal opinion, but I think it is the truth, <laughs> is that there is no one best online business idea. I think there are lots of good business models that are proven to work. If you look at what successful people are doing and reverse engineer that, that can work for you. You don't need to reinvent the wheel every time. And that was one of my early mistakes that I always had this thinking that to have a big business, it has to be something groundbreaking and new because otherwise it's already been done before. How can you compete with that? But I was completely ignoring the fact there are over 7 billion people in this world. There is definitely a need for more than one of every business. There is certainly a need for many, many thousands of agencies, of drop shippers and all of this different, different business ideas. So that was a big realization. But another realization I had was that 
This isn't just a problem exclusive to business. We do this in every area of our lives. And I think health is probably the most blatant example. We all know that to be healthier, to get the body we want, we just need to eat healthy food and exercise more. That sounds like I'm being facetious, but that is how you get that, isn't it? That's the simple strategy that has been proven to work. And yet, as soon as someone comes out with this new exciting diet or this supplement you should take, we completely ditch everything that we know to be true and focus on that because we're looking for that magic pill, that easy option, that quick hack to get there. But <laughs> very rarely does that help us. In fact, it normally sets us back. Whereas if we focused on the fundamentals, the things we know to work, we'd get the results we wanted. But that's just human psychology, I think. But once we're aware of that, we can catch ourselves when we start doing it. Certainly in terms of business, if you sort of notice that you're constantly being distracted by this new thing, when what you're doing right now has been proven to work, you can catch yourself and go, wait, no, I'm gonna stay focused and see this through, give it a proper chance. There's a quote I like by Tim Ferriss, who says something along the lines of, for every superhero in our minds is a walking floor who has simply maximized one or two strengths. And I think this applies in business quite nicely that actually the rich people that we think of, the super successful people in business have just doubled down on that one thing and stuck with it. It's very rare the people who try and do everything all at once that get the success. It's the ones who master some sort of skill and then really double down on that and then they expand rather than someone who from the very beginning tries to learn everything, tries to master all these different skills it's just too much all at once. So instead, focus on one key thing at a time. Now, of course, there are some things which are perhaps gonna be better, but that's on an individual basis. It depends on what your skill set is, what your interests are. So anyone who's telling you there is one definitive best business model, I think they've probably got a bit of an ulterior motive there because it really does depend on the person. You might be great at marketing and enjoy it, in which case a marketing agency is brilliant, but if that's just not something you're remotely interested in, then don't try and pursue it just because someone's telling you it's such a good business model. There are lots of good business models. The only real key, in my opinion, is you want something that's scalable and that's something that can potentially become automated eventually. And when I say automated, I just mean that you can kind of pass the work onto other people and outsource it or have systems where it runs on autopilot. Because in my opinion, the end goal should be that if you want to, you can take a step back from the business and just have the money coming in still. That's, in my opinion, the end goal. But the upshot I'm trying to, trying to stress is that we all need to be more aware of this shiny object syndrome. Even though it's something we all know about, you've probably even heard the phrase, it's still something we all fall into the trap of. But maybe you are sat there thinking, no, John, seriously, I have given all these different business models a fair go and none of them seem to be working. Well, I was listening to a podcast the other day that gave a couple of interesting examples that have really stuck with me since. The first was Colonel Sanders of KFC, when he was looking for investment in his business. How many times do you think he had to ask for investment before he actually got that investor who said yes and backed him? Well, I was thinking, okay, obviously it's gonna be quite a high number, the fact that someone's asking that question, maybe a couple of hundred. But apparently he asked 1,008 times before he got a yes. 1,008. I mean, it'd be one thing if it was like the 998 or something, because you'd go, ah, oh, well, he might have stopped at 1,000. But he didn't, he got 1,000 no's and he still carried on going. I mean, imagine if he didn't, a world without KFC. That's not a world I wanna live in. But before we get too hungry, let's move on to another example, which is Walt Disney. He'd already created Mickey Mouse at this point, and then he wanted to build his theme parks. You know, he's already successful, but he's ready to take it to the ne next level with, you know, Disney World. But he had to 
asked over 300 different investors before he got funding. And that was when he was already successful. Why am I telling you these examples? Well, just from a personal perspective, I found that kind of dedication to be quite inspiring. And it just shows you that even when things don't seem to be working, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means sometimes it needs more time, it needs more effort and commitment. And so it's the same, I think, with your business and what you're trying. If you're in a vehicle, by which I mean the business model, that has been proven to work, it can work for you too if you give it enough time, give it enough energy and effort. The problem is simply that we quit too soon. And so next time you are thinking of quitting, just think back to those examples. Think back to Colonel Sanders asking for over a thousand times for investment and carrying on going until he gets it and then just look where it went from there. And that can be you. You can be the next Colonel Sanders, but instead of selling fried chicken, you'll be selling whatever online product or service you wanna be selling. And the reason a lot of these videos harp on about mindset and the way you should be thinking about things, it's just because it applies to all of us. It doesn't matter whether it's Colonel Sanders, Walt Disney, or either of us, mindset is such a key factor to success, perhaps more so than the actual business model. The way you view it, the mentality you have really does seem to be defining. And although mindset is a bit of a buzzword, I think the fact that it is, it just shows you how important it actually is. That's why people keep talking about it because it matters so much. So to conclude all of this, what is the best online business you should be starting right now? Whichever one you're most interested in or have the most skills in, and then don't dabble with others. Stay focused on that, give it a proper go because the richest people, the most well-paid people are masters of something, they're not jack of all trades. The more specialized you can be, the more you can really hone a specific skill, the better results you're probably going to get. However, I appreciate that might not be quite the answer you were hoping for. From the title, you were probably looking for a specific business model that you can start right now to focus all your efforts on. And here's me saying, well, actually, a lot of different business models will work for you if you stick with them. So I do wanna offer something that you could start right now if you've got no idea where to begin and you don't know what to focus on. In my opinion, you cannot go wrong with focusing on building a personal brand. The reason I say that is that a personal brand can help you in any business, no matter what you start, no matter what you stick with, no matter any future businesses you start later down the line. A personal brand, if you've got a following, an audience, and people who trust you and already know you, it's automatically going to help any business that you start. Let's say you decide that you're gonna focus on affiliate marketing. Well, if you've already got a personal brand and an audience, you've already got people who you can promote the products to. If you start a marketing agency, well, you've already got people who are interested in what you have to say, which can help you get clients for the agency, or at least help you get referrals and all of this stuff. So it doesn't matter what business you start, if you've got a personal brand, it's gonna help you. That's, that's really the upshot there. And of course, a personal brand in itself is kind of a business because a personal brand on its own is essentially the same as being an influencer where you've got people who follow what you put out and then you can get people sponsoring posts and asking you to promote their stuff and so on. But in my opinion, the way to really win big and make a lot of money is when you combine that personal brand, that influence with a business model. And a business model, it can be as simple as just having a product or service that you sell. But once you do that and you combine them two together, that's when you really can make some serious money and become unstoppable. So if you are completely lost right now, you don't know where to begin, I think you cannot go wrong with working on your personal brand. And again, I'm not just plucking that out of nowhere. Go and look at anyone who you think of as being really successful in business. Most of them have quite a well-known personal brand. It's such an advantage. Even on a personal level, I've witnessed this firsthand that doing YouTube has just opened so many doors to me that I did not expect. It leads to new opportunities, new businesses, new revenue models that you just can't quite anticipate at the time. And so I think it's a great starting point at least. And what are the chances I've made a video on exactly that topic? You can go and watch that right there if you are interested. Thank you for watching though, and I'll hopefully see you next time. Cheers.